it, please. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. And council, you may begin. Morning, Madam Chair, Commissioners. Morning, everyone. I'd like to start with our next claim and the witness, Maud Jeanette Chantou, Nee Wilson, not Nee Wilson, I'm sorry, but in respect of the Wilson claim, I'd like to ask that the witness, prior to the witness being sworn, it could just be acknowledged that also connected at this time are her sons, her son, and forgive me for my pronunciation if I mispronounce, Najib Shantou. He is the person who made the initial claim and his mother is here representing him. He is actually out of the jurisdiction and he is in Morocco but he has joined us if necessary, and he is asked or required to assist. He is prepared so to do. Also joining us is another family member, another son, a brother, but he is just joining, but it is not intended that he would be required to give any evidence at this time. But I just advise the commission of what's happening. Could I ask that the witness is sworn or affirmed, depending on her religious conviction? Jeanette Shintu. I swear by the Almighty God. I swear by Almighty God. That the evidence I shall give. That the evidence I shall give. Shall be the truth. Shall be the truth. The whole truth. The whole truth. And nothing but the truth. And nothing but the truth. Thank you. Thank you. Council, before the witness commences our evidence, there's something I'd like to put on the record, please. Very well. Thank you. Out of an abundance of caution and to avoid any real danger or reasonable apprehension or suspicion that Commissioner Mr. Jonathan Starling may exhibit the appearance of bias, Commissioner Mr. Jonathan Starling has indicated that he shall <coughs> recuse himself from the deliberations. Oh, uh, in the, the claimant, um, the Chanteaux, uh, are known to personally to Commissioner Mr. Starling. This we place on the record in keeping with the international best practice of transparency. And so what that means, Madame, uh, because Mr. Starling is personally known to the family, it's seven of us, when we get to the point of deliberation, he will not be participating. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Council. Welcome. Good morning again, Madame. Good morning. Uh, and please, I apologize if I mispronounce your name at any time. Please bear with me. Could you state your address? Where do you live, madam? I live at Windblown, 14 Lee Craft Hill Upper in Southampton. Bermuda. Bermuda. You are retired? I am. Do you know the name Joseph Bean Wilson? 
Yes. Who is that person? He is the great grand, great great grandfather of mine. Okay. And before I take any further, you had given a statement in support of a claim made by your son. That is correct. And what is the name of your son? Najib Abdullah Shantou. Yeah. Now the statement you gave, you signed that statement, I madam? Did. I did. And that statement was dated the 24th day of November 2020? That's correct. The statement was witnessed by investigator Mr. Durant? That's correct. And you have a copy of that statement there with you? I do. Would you wish to refer to your statement to refresh your memory from it? Yes, I would. And I said the, and most importantly, you see your signature on both pages of the statement. That's correct, yes. I'd ask that the witness be allowed to refresh her memory from the statement, but I'd ask that it be tendered and admitted as an exhibit, exhibit MD, MC, I'm sorry, one. It's MD? C, I'm sorry, my apologies. MC? Yes, Madam Chair. You are allowed to refresh your memory, Mr. Chanteau, and the uh, statement is entered as Exhibit MC1. Thank you. Now, you, in, you indicated the relation to Joseph B. Bean Wilson. Do you know Rudolph Wesley Robinson? He is my father. He was my father. Now, in respect of what is known as Wilson Island, have you are you familiar with that name and that what is referred to as Wilson Island? I am. Okay. Where is that, madam? Uh, it's now called Five Star Island, located in Southampton. Now, have you ever been told any stories in relation to what was known as Wilson Island by any member of your family? My father, Rudolph Wesley Robinson, and my grandfather, Herman Hastings Wilson, have always told me the story about the Wilson Island. Okay. Let's start with your father. What has your father told you in relation to Wilson Island? My father always told me that the Wilson Island belonged to our family. And many years ago, his grandfather, or great-grandfather, uh, was, he needed to plant his garden of potatoes. He did not have the funds to plant the garden. And so he went to the, um, pause that be, I, I think I listed the name of the company in the Bermuda Company, and they told him they would give him a barrel of potato slips, but he would need to give some sort of collateral. And all he had was the deeds to the Wilson Island. So he gave the, Wilson, gave the deeds to the Wilson Island with the promise that when the potato crop harvested, he would be able to sell 10 barrels and return the money, the cost of the slips to the company so that he could get his deeds back. I was told the next year there was a blight and the potatoes never harvested and so the deeds were kept. Now, were you given an idea as to what period when this occurred? What century, what, when it was? Not really. Um, I heard it from my grandfather. I heard it from my father. I, uh, we never discussed really dates, um, so I, I'm, I'm not aware. 
uh, but Mr. Durand has really been working and diligently um, searching and uh, we've come up, he has come up with, with some dates which make sense um, and they surely connect um, to the evidence that is found. Thank you. Now the property, do you know exactly what is what was formerly known as Wilson Island? Where is that? Where exactly in Southampton is it? Yes, it's in Southampton. Where exactly? Uh, I it, mean, proximity to any other place. Could you? It is near the Carolina Beach, but it is the Carolina Beach property, but it is in the center of the, um, that would probably, the Carolina Beach property is to the far left from, of it. So it is in the, what we would consider the western part of the island. Thank you. If I... Oh. Uh, I, I'm sorry. Najib. Okay. Uh, Mr. Shantouf, if you wish to speak now, what we're going to ask you to do, could you just locate a Bible, if you swear by a Bible, or could you just be prepared to affirm to speak the truth? Would you, are you, do you have an issue swearing on a Bible or would you wish to affirm? Um, I don't have a Bible present. Uh, I'm happy to affirm. Okay. Could you just raise your right hand and listen to the words that are going to be, we're going to ask you to repeat. There is a lady who appears on the screen. Some words will be read to you. Just kindly follow those words. Please raise your right hand and follow the words that are being read and read aloud. Could you say your full name, please? My name is Najib Abdullah Shintouf. I do solemnly and sincerely affirm. I do solemnly and sincerely affirm. That the evidence I shall give. That the evidence I shall give. Shall be the truth shall be the truth, the whole truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. And nothing but the truth. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, sir. How are you today? Good morning. I'm fine. Thank you. Good. Is there any, I, I, you're about to say something. Uh, you may go ahead now. I, I was just going to add specifics about the, the location of, of, of Five Star Island. I'm not sure if it's actually relevant at this point. Please go ahead. So Wilson's Island is, is, is located, if we were looking for, I guess, landmarks close to it, um, it is located to the east of South Hope, Southampton Post Office, off of Middle Road, um, in, in the water. It's, it, it's an island. Um, it is between... Uh, again, for another point of reference, Southampton Post Office um, and uh, the sundial that is uh, located at um, Eden's Harbor. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Pr prior to the family being introduced to Mr. Durant, the investigator, had the family made any attempts to find documentary evidence in support of the contention that the Wilson Island was want for a better yes. term unfortunately taken away from you yes I, I I can speak to that um, I had uh, been to um, the archives, and I had also been to works in engineering to try and find maps that would substantiate um, Wilson's Island actually ever being called Wilson's Island. Um, I, I, I will put out there that I am the youngest um, the family represented here, so uh, there are those who have definitely heard our, our oral history uh, more times than me. Um, but I... I was made to understand that the name Five Star Island 
uh, came from selling the island to a then owner of a company called Five Star Cigarettes. And that is how we got the name of Five Star Island. So I, I've always believed, based on our oral history, that it was called Wilson's Island. Um, my research at the archives in the early 2000s um, and at Works in Engineering was uh, fruitless. Thank you. Now, on the 8th of June of this year, you, Mr. Shantuvu, submitted a electronic claim to the Commission of Inquiry in respect of yes, being able to give evidence here. Thank you. In respect of that electronic submission made by you, you had indicated that you have a picture of a map of Southampton attached, which shows Wilson's Correct. Island. That, that map um, was not found in any of my initial um, investigation in the early 2000s. That map was something that I discovered uh, as a, a, in a private place of business, um, and, and that map actually belongs to a uh, Bermudian resident. Um, and I did, I did submit with my um, submission a picture of that map, which shows Wilson's Island. Okay, J just a moment, please. We don't have this on there. I'm going to ask that the map which you had submitted in aid of your claim, I'm going to ask that this projected on the screen and you could and then through you, I'm going to ask the commission to consider to admit it as an exhibit. I just ask you to give us a moment kindly. While we await the sharing of the screen, you can also confirm that you had given some information in respect of the location of your family, um, the descendants. Can you recall what information you had provided in your claim in respect of where the Wilson descendants live? I'm pretty sure that I mentioned that um, the dis my family um, still live in Southampton on w on Wilson land. Um, our, our our cousins live on uh, St. Andrew St. Anne's Road. In fact, there are multiple Wilson's properties all along St. Anne's Road, off of St. Anne's Road, and in Sinky Bay in Southampton. Thank you very much. Now. Prior to the, the intervention of the investigator, Mr. Durant, had you, in your search of the archives, sought to locate a will, testament, of your uh, great-grandfather? Uh, yes, I had. Um, unfortunately, uh, at the time when I was when I was searching in the archives, um, I, in order to find the will and testament, I needed to be able to find it uh, by date of death, if I if I remember correctly. At that time, um, I wasn't really able to just you know search by name, um, and I didn't have a, a date of death. So my my mission was a little bit of uh, looking for you in a haystack, so to speak. Um, so I was not able to find the will and testament. Okay. Thank you. Are you able to see the image which is projected on the screen, which yes, I am. has been shared? 
does that appear to be a picture of the photo photograph that you submitted with yes, your claim? Yes, it is. Thank you very much. I'm going to ask Madam Chair that that copy of the photograph which had been submitted by Mr. Shantouf in support of his claim, I'd ask kindly that it be tendered as an exhibit, to be tendered as an exhibit as NC1. N, N, C. Thank you. Is that N, C, two? One. One. The first one was M, C. C. This is N, C. Thank you. Thank you. Well. Now, Miss, um, Mrs. Shantou, you had indicated earlier that you had been told certain things which you have given evidence of by your grandfather. I'm sorry, by your father. Is there any difference between what you had been told by your father and what your grandfather told you? Or is it, it is the same no, story? No, the stories were similar. The stories were almost exact. So... Um what I heard was the same thing from my father and my grandfather. Thank you. And the name that you are told, the company name of it was Bermuda Company? The Bermuda Company, yes, sir not Bermuda Development Company or any other, just Bermuda Company as the name? I am not aware uh, whether or not it is Bermuda Development Company or Bermuda Company, but it was the leading company at that time that was able to, to lend funds. Okay. Now, finally, Your great great grandfather Joseph Bean Wilson, are you aware whether he had any children? Yes, um, he, as far as I know, and Mr. Durant uh, located a, a piece of uh, evidence to say that he had 11 children. I am only aware of four uh, of those 11. Okay. I'm just going to ask you to tell me the four you're aware of when Mr. Durant is giving evidence. I'm allow, I'll allow him to tell us what he found. Could you tell us the four children that you're aware of? The four children is my grandfather, Herman Arthur Wilson. And then he had a brother named Arnold Inglefield Wilson. And as far as I know, he had the two sisters that I'm aware of is Mildred Alvin Wilson and Bernice Vanetta Wilson. The, could you just repeat for us the middle name of Mildred Wilson? Mildred Alwyn, E-L-W-I-N. Thank you. And the fourth person? Bernice Vanetta, that's V-E-N-N-E-T-T-A Wilson. Thank you very much. Madam Chair, I have no further evident, I mean, questions for these witnesses. I, however, well, I'm not sure if the commissioners have questions, but I would call Mr. Durant at the conclusion of that exercise. Do you have any questions for? I just have a question. Yes. Um, 
two questions. Go ahead. Um, good morning, Ms. Chanteau. Good morning. Um, did you indicate how long the loan term was? How long was the loan for? Uh, it, as far as I know, he received the loan the year before the potato, the potato crops were plant, so it, it, a year would have, it would have been about a year. And what was the dollar value that was borrowed? I have no or clue. Or pound value? Okay. I, I have no clue. Um, Thank you. It was estimated whatever the cost would have been for him to sell 10 barrels of potatoes to pay that amount back to the company. Thank you. You're welcome. That's it, Mrs. Ford? Yes. Ms. Linda Milligan White, any yes. questions? Yes. Go ahead, please. In your, madam, in your research of the matter, did you come across anything in writing indicating this transaction? None whatsoever, I'm sorry. And there was no lawsuit no. involving this situation? No, not no. at all. Not that I'm aware of. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. No questions? Mrs. Spence, any questions? Yes, Madam Chair. Go Jean. ahead, please, Mrs. Stubble. Good morning, Ms. Shantou. Good morning. Um, are you aware of any um, resistance uh, or challenge by your family with regard to the taking of possession of Wilson Island? Not that I'm aware of. Um, it was just stories that were told by my father and my grandfather. I've never been in told that any kind of action had been taken in regard to that. Um, <clears throat> So, I guess to that end, um, is there any uh, um, story as to how your family was removed? Like, how did it happen? Where did, in other words, did a boat just turn up one day and you had to get on the boat, or you know, was it a gradual? Is there, is there any story attached to how it actually, the removal was carried out? If I could answer that, perhaps, yes. or, or at least provide some context. Um, for context, as, as, as related to me again, oral history of our family, um, the land owned by the Wilson family was far greater than Five Star Island. Mm -hmm. Five Star Island was, uh, uh, or Wilson's Island, was a small piece mm -hmm. of a larger plot. Mm -hmm. um, so if we want to talk about it in, in modern day uh, boundaries, we're talking from Church Road in, in Southampton, where uh, St. Anne's Church is, um, right up onto the border of uh, the Southampton Princess property, mm -hmm. just past Sinky Bay from South Shore all the way over until Middle Road. Mm -hmm. So when we're talking about removing people, we aren't necessarily talking about somebody leaving a dwelling on Wilson's Island, it being evicted, so to speak, it, it, if that provides some context. We're talking about a, a, a large tract of land with lots of planting grounds and, and very few dwellings. Thank you, because that, that does add um, context. Uh, because one of the things that we would be, um, have uh, had the opportunity to hear um, witnesses testify um, is the traumatic experience. But uh, now that you've put that in context, um, I, I have a better understanding. Um, is there okay. any... Uh, I'd like to just add one more piece, if I could. 
Yes. Um, uh, the, the story of Wilson's Island is our most prevalent story. Um, and the finding the map that I found in 2017 um, has, has been able to kind of uh, match uh, our oral history with something documented. However, we have other stories within our family of that large tract of land shrinking. Um, and, 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 and being aggressively uh, uh, acquired, shall we say. So I, I, I just kind of want to put the frame of reference out there um, for the broader Wilson uh, family and the broader tract. Um, an additional question. Uh, do you have any idea when the time frame or how far your, your family goes back? Or, or maybe are you able to find, put a finer point on, I guess, when your family became uh, prominently associated with the land? I, I can't personally. I, I do believe that with my submission, I also submitted uh, the dates of that map. And the dates uh, were just around, I want to say, 1898, 99. Um, so that, that is one of the few dates that we have. OK, and just so I make sure I understand, was there nobody living on Five Star, and was that just another um, farm, if you will? I, I can't say that for sure. Um, I, I, I just wanted to provide the reference that, that the land mass was much larger than, than Wilson's Island. That and that correct. we weren't necessarily um, living on Wilson's Island. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Anything arise in council? Nothing, Madam Chair. Thank, Thank you. you. So we could call your next, the next witness. Thank you very much. Mrs. It's <coughs> going to ask that Mrs. the witness Chandler. and Mr. Durant would just exchange seats or right. places. I'm sorry. Thank you. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Council Harrison. Yeah. How are you today? Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you. Would you wish to stir on the Bible or to affirm to speak the truth? I'd like to affirm, please. Okay. Could you just raise your right hand, and I'm sure you know it. Or you'd like it to be read yeah. to you? Can't remember. So long. Okay. Could you just state your name? Yes. My full name is Edward Junior Durant. I would do it for you, but I won't deprive Mrs. <laughs> Shaw solemnly and sincerely. I do sol solemnly swear. I no no, 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 no. I do solemnly and sincerely affirm. I do solemnly and sincerely affirm that the evidence I shall give that the evidence I shall give shall be the truth. Shall be the truth. The whole truth. The whole truth. And nothing but the truth. And nothing but the truth. Thank you. And just before we proceed, Madam Chair, just to indicate to Mr. Shantou, who is still there, that it doesn't preclude him from still assisting us as we go along. Thank you. No, sir, you have been assigned to review a claim made in circumstances surrounding the loss of Wilson Island, Southampton? That is correct. And that assignment was given as an investigator through the Commission of Inquiry? That is correct. Thank you. And having 
conduct a review of the claim, you have written a statement? That is correct. A report. Sorry. A report, thank you. And you also have done some research and obtained a number of documents? That is correct. These documents and the research that you have done, you have included in your report? That is also correct. The report that you generated, wrote, are you able to tell us what's in the report without looking at the report? Uh, not correctly. I get, need some assistance from the report. You need some assistance. You'd, witness would like to refresh his memory from the report. You have a copy of the report there, sir? Yes, I do. Okay. It's three pages. That is correct. Okay. I'd ask that the document, Madam Chair, which is entitled Review of and Pronunciation, please forgive me, Najib Shantou, claim relating to circumstances surrounding the loss of Wilson's Island, Southampton, with the name Edward Jr. Durant affixed to the end. I'm going to ask that that report be tendered and admitted as an exhibit, <coughs> ED1, Madam Chair. Is it, is it Edward Jr. Durant or just ED? Is Jr. part of your name? I'm christened Jr., yes, Madam. So it's e, EJD. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. EJD1, entered. Thank you. Report of uh, Officer Edward Junior Durant. With reference to the your report, sir, Mr. Durant, mm -hmm. could you just tell me by way of introduction what does this matter relate to? Madam Chair, this matter relates to a well-known Bermudian landmark in St. Hampton Parish called Five Star Island, formerly known as Wilson Island arising from a submission to the Commission of Inquiry into the historic land loss by Mr. Najib Sentou, a resident now of Morocco in North, America, North Africa. Could you tell us about the submission that is entailed in your report, sir? Yes. The submission narrative anecdotal is in nature, describes Mr. Sentou's ancestor, Joseph B. Wilson, as the last Wilson owner of Wilson Island. The circumstances of his ownership and eventual loss have been passed down over time to various of the Wilson family members. One version of the story claimed that the island would have had to be stolen from the Joseph, from Joseph B. Wilson by the 40 thieves, and another alleging that Uncle Joe was forced to sell the land for 10 barrels of potatoes. Aside from this, there is little upon which to launch an inquiry into this claim. However, Mr. Shentu advised that his mother, Jeanette Shentu, lived in Bermuda and that she could ably give better assistance for further information. Now, based on the report, did you arrive at a determination of the circumstances of the loss, sir? Yes. Could you share that with us? Mrs. Shantoff confirmed that she was aware of the submission made by her son and provided additional details of the story told by her father, Rudolph, Rudolph W. R. Wilson, to the effect that her great uncle at the time, she thought it was her great uncle, Joseph B. Wilson, wanted to plant potatoes, but did not have the funds to purchase potato slips to enable him to commence planting. In order to obtain the slips, he handed over the paperwork believed to be having the deeds to Wilson Island to an unknown individual or individuals with the understanding that when the crop was harvested, he would repay the debt 
with 10 barrels of potatoes. The debt having been repaid, the paperwork relating to ownership of Wilson Island will be returned to him. The potato crop failed, believed to be as a result of a potato blight. Joseph Dean Wilson was unable to repay his debt and paperwork describing his ownership of the island was not returned to him. Mrs. Shantou was quick to say that she had never seen any written documentation to confirm this allegation or if there was any documentation at all as back then she continued the deals sometimes were made verbally. Okay. Research indicates that Wilson Island was originally owned by a John and Catherine Wilson during the 17th century. And in the 19th century, it was purchased by a Miss Jane Helen Melvin Sultan, who later married Rear Admiral Sir Charles Thomas Jones in 1817. Efforts to trace the ownership of the island between the time of the 17th century and the acquisition in the 19th century were unsuccessful. In addition, there is nearly a hundred year gap between the ownership of Miss Sultan in the early 1800s and that of the Cooper family in 1932, where ownerships could not be established. <coughs> Could you share with us the chronology of ownership of Wilson's Island, sir? Yes. Chronologically, going to order ownership of Wilson Island, John and Catherine Wilson in the early 19th, 17th century, Jane Helen Melville Sultan in the early 19th century, Cooper family from 1932. Charles Foster Victor Cooper received by voluntary conveyance from his parents, Laura, Anne, and Alexander Cooper. Okay. Alfred Valentine Lehman, December 2nd, 1938, acquisition by alien from Charles Foster Victor Cooper. Morris Alvin Gibbons, August 9th, 1950, by conveyance from Alfred W. Lehman. Oresti and Alice Steph Stefano, which changed the name to Fire Star Island because of a cigarette copy that they earned, from Morris A. Gibbons. And then Kurt Inglehorn, May 28th, 1970, is received by acquisition from Alice Stefano. In 2012, a Caroline Inglehorn, a German national, applied to the Bermuda Immigration for sanction to acquire Five Star Island, which is 2.11 acres, and a strip of land on the waterfront opposite the island, which is 0.008 of an acre, an acquisition of land notice having been published in the official gazette. The status of this, the outcome of this application is unknown at present. Whilst exhaustive research has revealed details of acquisition and ownership of Wilson Island by a number of individuals, efforts to identify Joseph B. Wilson's ownership of it were unsuccessful. He is believed to have earned property in the vicinity of Firestar Island, with at least one of his descendants living in the area today, to, to date. Mr. Joseph B. Wilson's name was entered in the registry of freeholders for Southampton Parish in 1895, indicating that he was a property owner and entitled to vote. In 1925, Mr. Joseph Wilson, being Wilson, conveyed a number of parcels, parcels of land to various of his children via voluntary conveyance, further indicating, indicating that he was a property, had property in Southampton Parish, respectively, at Virginia Durant. Thank you. 
in terms of your review and research, did you come across any documents which you found useful to aid in your review? Yes, I found documents um, that Mr. Wilson did have property and I did share it, um, give it to his sons, various sons. I'm going to show you some documents. Can you just look at each one for me? And tell me if you ident if you have ever seen any of them before, sir. What do, what's the first one you have there? It's a notice from the Royal Gazette um, showing the name of Wilson Island. It says, notice much injury having been done so just, to the- Just before you go through the contents. That, have you ever seen that before? Yes, I have. And where have you seen that before? I have found documents in the uh, on the Royal Gazette site. Okay. This. Okay. And could you just tell us what is the title or heading of that document? It's dated January 31st, 1880. Notice much injury having been done to the young cedars on the late on on uh, the late Rosen Island. Just a minute, is that the heading or does it have a title? No, it doesn't okay. have a title. Well, it just says a notice. notice. Okay. I just asked that document, the notice from the Royal Gazette, dated January 31st, 80. 1880. January 31st, 1880. So that's uh, 80, but it's 1880. Yes. Pardon me? Oh, 80, that's, that's 80, 80, 80. but it was Thank 80, you very 80. much. I'd ask that it be 10 admitted as an exhibit. Exhibit. E J yes. D two. You may so, go ahead and read it now, sir. So that I have it correct, Mr. Duran. Sorry, Council. I have notice from the Royal Gazette dated January thirty first. Yes, yes. And the year? It's, it says eighty. Eight zero. Eight zero. So, I'm, I'm assuming it's eighteen eighty, which is okay. wouldn't be nineteen eighty, yeah. And Point of information. Uh, can we safely assume that it's 1880 as opposed to 1780? I cannot confirm that, sir. Okay. So we should just leave it as 80? Yes, I would okay. Okay. request, Thank you. respectfully request, sir. <coughs> Entered as exhibit EJD2. Thank, Thank you, you counsel. Could you kindly just read the document for us? Yes. It says, notice, much injury having been done to the young cedars on late Wilson, now Malville Island at Port Royal. Notice is hereby given that all future trespassers will be prosecuted according to law. Sam A. Smith. That's the first document. Um, another document is got for sale uh, a cottage about 12 acres of land. Sorry, is that a. Another newspaper article. And what's the date of that one? November 15th, 1881. November? One five eighteen eighty one. Thank you. Yeah, so that document be exhibited as E J D three. 
And this is another Royal Gazette document? Yes, my lady. Thank you. Thank you, Council. Thank you, Madam. Please, please, could you share that with us, sir? Yes, it says, for sale, a cottage, about 12 acres of land, situated near Wilson's Island, Southampton, a mile west of Lighthouse, of the Lighthouse. And then also a lot of land, same, same article, a lot of land of nine and a half acres and a lot of about six acres for terms and other information. Please apply to the Mrs. Boyle, Glasgow Lord Southampton, November 15, 1881. Thank you. <clears throat> What else do you have there, sir? Uh, I have... So should we enter this one, Council? That was... That oh. was number... That, that has gone... You had given it a designation already, Madam. So, oh, the, oh, the Royal Gazette dated the November 15, 1881? Yes, yes, Madam. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank, thank you. No, sir, what, what do you have there? This is another document I found in the, the archives with the name Joan Wilson in the contents. And that, that other document, how many pages is it? It's three, my lady. And the <coughs> name John Wilson in the contents, where is that found? on page two and three of the document. Are you able to give us a, a heading, what, what's the document, does the document have a title on the front page? The just as inspection of the tobacco audit in 1622. Just going to ask you to repeat, what appears on the cover, cover page? Um, it, appendix XV. Roman numeral XV? Yes. yes sir. Just ask that, that document, three pages, cover page bearing words appendix, <coughs> XV, Roman numerals XV, that it be tender admitted as exhibit EJD4. If you still entered council, EJD4. Please share with us the contents of the document that relate to the name. Good. Wilson. On page two of the document, it says that um, Joan Ball and Joan Wilson, two overseers of Southampton tribe, and taking their oath oh, for the Fidlites, are basically talking about um, they were two, two people, Joan Wilson, another man was. Um, assigned to inspect tobacco going out of Bermuda from on the ships. That's on page two. And on page three, his name is mentioned with the other members of the um, team tribe, Southampton so, so tribe. That's it? For this, yeah. Thank you very much. What next do you have there? I have a Supreme Court of Bermuda, um, the will of Mr. Joseph Bean Wilson. <coughs> How many pages is that document? Two, my lady. I uh, saw that document refers to the Supreme Court and the will of Joseph Bean Wilson that to be tender admitted as exhibit EJD5. 
The will of Mr. Joseph Bean Wilson, two pages, entered as EJD5. Thank you. And that is... Sorry. That's one of the documents also that you found as yes. part of your research. Yes. Yes. Please, go ahead. In the Supreme Court of Bermuda, be it known that on the date hereof, the last will, which is hereto an annex of Joseph Bean Wilson, late of Southampton Parish in the islands of Bermuda, deceased, who died on the 15th day of February, 1944, at Southampton Parish, aforesaid, was duly admitted to probate in this court and that the administration of the personal estate of the deceased is hereby granted by this court to Arnold Inglefield Wilson, the surviving exorder named in the said will, he having been duly sworn and appears by this affidavit, which is hereto annexed, given under my hand and the seal of the Supreme Court of Bermuda this 13th day of December, 1945. In the Supreme Court of Bermuda, in the estate of Joseph B. Wilson, deceased, I, Arnold Inglefield Wilson of, War of Warwick Parish in the islands of Bermuda, shipwright, make oath and say that I believe the paper writing here to annex and marked JBW and initialed by me to contain the true and original last will and testament, testament of Joseph Dean Wilson of Southampton Parish in the island of Bermuda, deceased on the deceased, who died on the 15th day of February, 1944, at Pembroke Parish, uh, sorry, Southampton Parish, after said that I am a son of the said deceased and the surviving exorcist named in the said will that I will exhibit a true and perfect te inventory of the, of the said estate and render a just and true account, therefore, however, whenever required by law to, the, to do so. And that the gross value of the... gross value of the... Something's missing. Heretofore made by me and declared this to be, to be my, my last will, I appoint my son Arnold Inglefield Wilson of Warwick Parish in said islands, of, said islands and my nephew Henry Granville Wilson of Southampton Parish, ever said to be the executors of this my will. And I direct my executors to pay all of my just debts, funeral and testimonial expenses as soon as possible after my de decease. Two, I devise all my real estate to the two eldest sons of my daughter, Mildred Allen, the wife of Henry Allen of Devonshire Parish in the said islands, equally between them as tenants in this common in fee simple. Three, I bequeath all my personal estates to my sad daughter, Bernice Bendata Wilson, absolutely. In witness, wherefore, I have hereunto said, set my hand this 27th day of July, 1931. And it's got signed by the above name Joseph B. Wilson as his last bill in the presence of himself and us, who at his request and in such joint presence have here, here unto subscribed our names as witnesses. Um, Elsa Goslin and G. C. G. Montague recorded the 13th day of December, 1945. I can't pronounce, I can't read the signature, but the registrar. Thank you, sir. 
Earlier, when Mrs. Shantou gave her evidence, she made reference to the fact that based on your industry and research, you had made a discovery that her great-grandfather had 11 children. Her uh, great-great-grandfather, yes. Thank you very much. And do you have the names of those 11 children? Yes, my lady. And in terms of your research, where did you obtain this information? From the Registry General and Government Building. Thank you. What are the names of the 11 children and their relevant okay. information? Okay, Joseph Wilson had 11 children. In chronological order, my lady, the oldest was Herman Arthur Wilson, date of birth. April 29, 1885. And just before you go any further, the information of the 11 children, their date of birth, full name, you made a note of it and shared it with Mrs. Shantou? Yes, I did. And what do you have there now? Yes, I, this is a copy, yes. And I saw that document which you witnessed created a copy of which he exhibits, that it be tendered and admitted as Exhibit E. Six. Thank you, Madam Chair. EJD 6. And that's in your own handwriting, officer? It's now typed, my lady. That, okay. Ah, so if you're permitted to read the doc document into the record. Okay. My lady, I want to make one, one clarity, sir, also. Some of these spellings of these names uh, it was from the registry may sound like the opposite sex, but it's how it's written and I, I found in the recordings at the, court, at the registry general's office. So number one, Herman Arthur Wilson, date of birth, April 29, 9th, 1885. He was baptized on July the 19th, 1885. And the mother of this Herman, Herman Arthur was Leela, L-E-L-I-A, Elois, E-L-O-I-S-E. -E. Her maiden name was Newbold, and she was Mrs. Wilson. Number two, Arnold Inglefield Wilson, Date of birth, November 15th, 1886. He was baptized on January the 30th, 1887. He had the same mother. The third name um, was obviously stillborn. There's no, no name, but it was the child was born on November 7th, 1887. Didn't have a name attached to it. Same mother of that. The next one was Rupert Evelyn, E V E L Y N Wilson, date of birth February 23rd, 1889, baptized on June the 2nd, 1889. Same mother. The next is Mildred. L Elwin, E L W I N, Wilson, date of birth October 12th, 1890, baptized December 28th, 1890. Same mother. The next name was Rufus Bronson, B R O W N S O N, Wilson, date of birth July the 3rd, 1892. Baptized September the 18th, 1892. Same mother. The next name, Joseph Bryan, B-R-Y-A-N, Wilson. Date of birth, August the 23rd, 1893. Baptized November 12th, 1893. Same mother. Next name, Clayton Alphonsus Wilson. Date of birth, December 19th, 1894. 
baptized March 22nd, 1895. Same mother. The next name, Bernice Venetta, V-E-N-N-E-T-T-A Wilson. Date of birth, March the 3rd, 1896. Baptized June, June the 7th, 1896. The mother's middle name here is pronounced, uh, spelled E-L-V-I-N. Same first name, Leela, but it says Alvin. Same, did it, same last names. So it could be a mistake in the writing, but that's what, that's what is recorded. The next name is Eula Lee. E-U-L-A-L-I-E, -L -L -E, Francis Wilson, date of birth, May the 5th, 1898, baptized July 17th, it should be um, 1898. The mother, again, spelled, middle name is Even, Alvin, E-L-V-I-N. The next name is Ednice, E D. N-I-C-E, Roosevelt Wilson, date of birth, October the 12th, 1899, baptized October the 16th, 1899. The mother's middle name here has an E on Elvin, E-L-V-I-N-E. That's the 11th. Point. Yeah. That's Thank 11th. you very much. Did your industry and research provide, produce any more documents? Yes, sir. So um, please continue. Another Royal Gazette article dated December the 30th, 1919. And I said that document be exhibited <coughs> as EJD7. Madam Chair. Thank you. Please go ahead, sir. The title is Potato Blight Hurts Crop. Director of Agriculture says wet weather and lack of spring contribute to loss. A good deal of harm has, done, has been done to the potato crop by the late blight. This seldom attacks the first triumph crop, but this year, owing to much wet weather, it has made unusual progress. Mr. E. J. Wortley, Director of Agriculture, tells us that tells us that want of spring has had much to do with the spread of the disease. He says that if our farmers will give as much attention to the spring early in the season as they do later on, the trouble will be avoided. He is preparing a circular on this question for general distribution. By attacking the leaves and stems, the blight prevents natural growth and so dim diminishes the size and quantity of the potato. It is not known yet uh, to what extent loss has been occurred, but complaints are heard from many growers. We have been told by one of this colony's most prominent growers that he estimates the loss to be triumph crop at 40,000 pounds. That's it. Thank you. Council, may I, just for completeness, I did not state this exhibit for the record and I'd like to do so. Um, it's the Royal Gazette, uh, December 30th, 1990. Um, 1919, yes. 1890? 19, 19, yes. 19, 19. 19, 19. 19, 19. 19, 19. 19, 19. 19, 19. 19, 19. 19, 19. 19, copy of a document I found at the um, archives uh, on Five Star Island, 
uh, the history of Fire Island in, in a brief history. How many pages is it? Just one page, sir. Thank you. Does it have a head in? Um, just says Fire Star Island, 14F5. I'd ask that, that document be tendered and exhibit, exhibited as EJD8. Madam Chair. Yes, thank you. Um, this is a copy of a document from the archives, a one-page document? Yes, my lady. One-page document. Is there any date or anything on it? Um, not on this particular page, no, my lady. Okay. And it's entered as Exhibit EJD8. The title says Fire Star Island. And if that, it says 14 slash F as in Frank 5. In brackets, Melville Island, Wilson's Island. <coughs> May I proceed, sir? What's relevant to this case, my ladies? Located off of Southampton's northern coast, the island was the scene of the first unfurling of a royal standard in Bermuda, which gave the whole parish its nickname, Port Royal. The island's ancient title was Wilson's Island, commemorating its 17th century owners, John and Catherine Wilson. Later on in this document, it says, Wilson's Island was purchased in the early 19th century by Jean Helen Melville Sultan. S A L T O N. An entry in the Book of Grants proclaimed it was henceforth to be called Malville's Island. That's it. Thank you. Next. <coughs> it's um, the chronological order of um, owners of Firestar Island only from from 32 to present. From, from 19, 1932 to present. And that was obtained also where? This was uh, obtained, my lady, from the Land Registry Office on uh, Victoria Road Street. How many pages is that document? Bill. It's, um... What year did it start? Okay. And that's. He's seeking to describe a document for us now, Madam Chair. It's actually five different documents, my lady, and mm -hmm. two of them have two pages. These are the, um, the owners, how they obtained the property from 1932 to present. The, the first document I read, I read was about the first two orders, and now so I'm now going to... because it's five different documents, are you going to put them in as EJD9, or are you going to call them 9A? I'm whatever. going to call them 9, Madam Chair. I just wish the witness to indicate the okay. first document, what is... Okay. What appears on the face yeah. of it, as okay. a head in our title. Okay. The, um, the first document, my lady, is heads... Um, heads of the voluntary conveyance, date 15th November 1932. The grantors were Laura Ann Cooper and Alexander Samuel Cooper, and the grantee was Charles Forster Ritter Cooper. And this relates to Wilson Island. Okay. And then the, that's the first document. The second document was acquisition by alien. This is a memorandum under the Alien Act 1926. This is dated December 2nd, 1938. Name of person acquiring. Na and nationality is Alfred Valentine Lehman, 
spelled L-E-A-M-A-N, a citizen of the United States, Palm Beach, Florida. And the name of the person that sold it to him was Charles Forster Ritter Cooper on December 2nd, 1938, Rosen Island. The third document, my lady, is Notice of Parish Bastry Clerk of San Parish under the Parish Bastry Act, um, dated 9th of August, 1950. Mr. Alfred Valentine Lehman sold it to Morris Alvin Gibbons of Tuckerstown the same Rosen Island. The next document, Mem Memorandum of Pursu Pursuant to the Alien Act, um, 4 one Date of acquisition, 23rd of February, 1951. Alien acquiring it was Alice Stefano, wife of Oresti Constantine Stefano of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And it was sold by Uncle Vance from Morris Alv Alvin Gibbons. <coughs> And then the last one, my lady, is um, memorandum on the Bermuda Immigration and Protection Act. Did an acquisition, 28th of May, 1970. Transfer, Alice Stefano, American. Transferee, Kurt, spelled C-U-R-T, Ingelhorn, a German national. And his, his purchase, the sad ghost in the Thank you. Next. The last thing I thought was I have, my lady, is um, six different documents relating to Joseph Bean Wilson transferring parcels of land to various members of his family. That's Joseph. Joseph Bean Wilson mm -hmm. transferring voluntary conveyance a number of properties to his children or family members. And it's six different documents. Yes, right? my lady. Okay. And I said those six documents relating to transfer of land from Joseph Bean Wilson to persons that that be tender admitted as exhibit E J D ten. So entered council. Okay. E J D ten the six different documents which uh, transferred the land from Joseph Bean Wilson. We won't need to go through those, but we'll just we'll be there for the aid of the commissioners after. I have I have no further questions at this time, Madam Chair. Commissioners, any questions for Mr. Durant? Officer Durant? Madam? No? No? Any questions? No. No questions, uh, Council. Oh, sorry. Mrs. Spins has, has a question yeah. or two. Um, this is just a, a question to Council. Um, is it possible to uh, not in all cases, um, but in terms of the um, Five Star Island, subpoena the 
present day D for um, mm-hmm. because that should carry um, the history of um, you know as part of this investigation it should carry the history and I don't know how far it would go back but at least that's a source of Mr. determining Durant, ownership Sorry. that that will be explored you finished with council I am madam chair okay Thank you, Mr. Durant. May I just interject and thank Mr. Durant. He's one of the officers who volunteered, came out of retirement and volunteered his service to assist us with these matters. And this is one of the matters that he has dealt with. Thank, thank you. you, Mr. Durant. Thank, thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. If, if I could provide just a piece of information, if possible. Go ahead, please, Mr. Speaker. Hello. Uh, Madam Chair, uh, oh. just before Mrs. Binns goes, I believe the witness who is speaking to us from Zoom has asked to say something before yeah. Mrs. Binns yeah. continues. Go ahead, please, sir. Um, I, I, I don't know of the relevance, but just for a point of information, in EJD 1, paragraph 1, it, it stated that I'm a resident of Morocco. I'm very much a proud Bermudian um, <laughs> as well, um, and, and a Bermudian citizen. Um, and I'd also like to express um, the, the thanks of our family to Mr. Durant. Um, thus far, the information he's provided us has been very beneficial to, to us. Very good. Thank you. We wish to thank you. Yes. Council so Mrs. B? Yes, I think Mrs. Bins was. Bins, yes. Do you want me to repeat the question? Thank you. Yes. No, no, I'm, I'm fine. I indicated that that shall be done. Okay. Also, um, the Royal Gazette, I think, was founded in 1828. So one of the documents that was submitted in evidence um, where we didn't know the, whether it was 1780 or 1880, we can probably narrow it down to post the paper being founded. Thank you very much. In 1828. Much. Thank you. Okay. Madam Chair, at this time, the, the other witnesses that we had hoped to have at this time, they mm-hmm. have had some um, personal difficulties being here at this time. The, the next witness that we have is at 1.30. Very well. Well, I believe commissioners deserve an early break. And so we will break at this time. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. And thank you, Mrs. Chenoff. Um, I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly. Chantouf for and, coming. And also her sons who are presently and, listening. Yes, and her sons. Yes. By Zoom. Thank you.